You're from so, obvious question. You're from Navarre, Florida, Santa Rosa County, about three hours away from Florida State's campus. First time you're going to get to play Florida State, especially in Tallahassee, after you know whatever went down in high school, being overlooked, coming to play North Carolina. How much has that been on your mind this week? How much have you used as fuel, and what does it mean to go back home and play in front of family there? Honestly, Luke, like it doesn't it doesn't really change my preparation. I think what fuels me is my teammates. It don't really matter who we play. We can play the, the New York Jets, and I'm trying to go hard. So it don't it don't matter for me. And I, I will say this: Florida State record, they're better than their record shows. They're really talented across all the way up and down their roster. And so I think it would be a good matchup for us, um, a good challenge. Um, but as far as, you know, adding motivation, I'm, I'm blessed to be in the position that I am. So I think the I, it would behoove me to take advantage of the situation. Any excitement to just play in Florida again? Yeah, I do like being in Florida. It's just because it's where I'm from. But I, I, I don't think that just like playing Florida State means so much more than playing any other opponent because, you know, we have a goal, and that's to win a championship. So, um, however, we can get there. All right, let's go over to Taylor Vipolis. What's up, Mike? After the game, Brian Anderson said that game was for Mitch Mason. What was the moment like for you when you saw him last week on the big board before the game, and overall, just what he means to the program? Yeah, I. Had, it's so crazy, Taylor, because you know, like, you know how Mitch is. Like, he, he he's a staple. Like. He's really a staple in, in, in our Tar Heel family. So just seeing him on the board, and I had just texted him on, that was Thursday, I texted him on Tuesday, you know, thinking about you, uh, praying for you, because he means a lot to me. And he's helped me and so many other people through tough times. And he's always an, an encouraging person, just even when he doesn't know that you need it, and you did need it. You know, he, he was there to say, what's up, man? Like, how you doing? Like, so um, I think it was it was huge for me. It was It was an emotional moment for me. Just to see that, you know, he's even though he's going through a tough time, he he's so selfless, and I think that's inspiring. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, CL Brown, go ahead. All right, Michael, you guys have scored on the opening drive of every game so far this year. Um, what do you feel like has been the the secret to that success? Why why are you guys so good so far uh, on those opening drives? I don't know. It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's an emphasis on trying to start fast and be consistent throughout the game, which I think we have to do better uh, in the next few weeks um, going forward, you know, trying to play a full quarter game. And, but we do put an emphasis on starting fast and finishing fast. So I think we do start fast and we do finish fast. I think we're our, our point of, our point of uh, emphasis that we need to get better on is, you know, them second and third quarter. So uh, we're working, though. We're working hard. So we're going to get it done. Yeah. And, and besides obviously having the lead, um, does, what does it do psychologically for the offense, you know, to, to know you game planned it, you executed, it worked, you're up seven Oh, after that first drive, like how, how does that affect you guys, you know, moving forward after that? Yeah. I think it helps us get the momentum early in the game, which you guys saw on Saturday. Momentum is a big deal, bigger than it looks. Um, uh, so I think just having a momentum, but I think like throughout the game, whether we're up or down and scoring or not scoring on offense and, and defense, special teams, we're a confident bunch. So um, momentum, I think the momentum is always in our favor, at least some extent, just because of the way that we carry ourselves. So. All right. Thanks. Okay. Let's go to Tomasi Duamensa. Hey, Michael. So we always hear about the UNC culture and how everybody's pushing each other, working really, really hard. How has the culture evolved from what it was a season or two ago? How has the culture evolved? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good question. I think it's interesting because um, one thing that we've always been here is, is tough. Win or lose, we fight. And I think the I think the biggest change is that we're just having fun with each other. Like you look at an effort like Saturday, which is hard to recreate. It was it was just a moment. Um, but you take a look at what the offensive line is doing. Well, they're getting they they pushing people off the ball. Brian Anderson had seven knockdowns. Like 
that's, that's that's good work, Brian. But like the rest of the guys did a great job too. And then if you go back and watch replays of the games and uh, these receivers are blocking down the field like they head on fire. You got you got Daz um, Newsom out on the edge blocking uh, um, Dax Holyfield, and then he gets past him, and then he goes back to block him again just because he cares about me or his teammates that much. So I think just like the a culture of just like playing for each other, um, selfless play, and the continued toughness is is the biggest part, along with just like having fun because we wasn't uh, you know losing not fun so. Um, I think we're having a lot more fun. All right, let's go to Charlie Mickens. Charlie, go ahead. Yeah, Michael, um, the, the other day you, you all were scoring, you know, pretty, uh, you know, five or six play drives and stuff and nothing like, a, you know, y'all weren't like 10 plays or anything like that or anything. So how is this offense cooking, cooking right now, uh, three games in now? Yeah, I, I think we're um, headed in the right direction. Like I said, I still like we have. I still feel like we have stuff to work on, and just being more consistent. Um, I do feel like, like you said, that we we played better than we have played in recent games, and I think that's just because of the 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 time, the timing. Like uh, Sam said before, you know, the more time we get, the better our timing will get. So, um, I I think it's shown that one, the timing is clicking, and we're playing for each other, and we're having fun. Thank you very much. Hey, Mark, let's uh, let's do the last one for Michael here. All right, last one. Uh, Emma Steinberg, go ahead, Emma. Uh, looking back at Saturday with COVID impacting in-game attendance and that, that energy that comes from the crowd, did you feel a difference in having a crowd back versus having fanless stadiums in prior games? And how have you been able to keep that momentum up otherwise with the team? I think um, I think it's, it's great that we have fans there, but at the same time, I think our, our energy comes from the locker room, you know, and, and we do love seeing our fans. So there's no like, like we love the fans. So I want that to be clear. But I think at the same time, if you don't bring your own juice, it's hard to win a game. So to answer your question, yeah, we are thankful for the fans, but I think that it's up to us to create that edge before the game and then practice in the week. 